here we go. Welcome, everybody, to Wolf Den Live. The podcast, 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 podcast. Wolf Den Podcast, everybody. Oh, he screwed up, everybody. Not no, me. No, I didn't. Not your boy. Never have, never will. Not not your boy, Willie Pete over here. Will, how are you doing on this fine I'm not, day? I'm good. I'm tired. Uh, I'm, I'm doing swell. How is you, B? I'm good. Uh, why did the stream froze on, on my screen? What happened? What did we do? Did we break it? You might no, have. We're, we're good. We're good. Okay. Everything's fine. I don't know. Got a lot of problems here. Well, I was not prepared yeah. for this podcast. Uh, <laughs> hey, Jeffrey. Uh, thanks for the seven months. Here we go. Yay. Yahoo. Waha. Guys, I got a really cool neon sign that has the wolf logo on it, but I didn't put it up yet, so you can't see it yet. It'll be up tomorrow. Yeah. Sorry, guys. It's going to go right there where this stupid thing is. Um. Anyway, Will sounds caffeinated. Will, what's up with that? You know, I, I, to be I, I not. I only had I only had one and a half cups of coffee today. I did not have my f usual two in the morning. When did and you possibly a third in the afternoon? When did you become a coffee person? This the is the very second new. I became old. No, I've been. Um, it's been like a four year thing, I think. When did you become so thirty? Basically, yeah. When I turned thirty. <laughs> I'll be honest, I, I became a coffee snob when I turned 30. I've always liked coffee, but co I became a coffee snob. It was like slow 30. go. Like I tried in college and I hated it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had to start ha having like a cup on my way home from work because I was like falling asleep at the wheel. Uh, and then when I turned 30, I'm like, you know what? Cup in the morning, maybe a second cup, not going to kill me. And that's that's how I started. You well, start with the flavored coffees. That's what. Yes. That was my mistake. You start with the hazelnuts and your French vanillas and, and your other weird fancy crap uh, that your father makes fun of you for. Uh, and also add the flavor creamers to it because that helps out a lot. And then eventually you just settle for Dunkin' Donuts and almond milk. And, you, and then that's how you get by on your day. That's what I tell everybody. Every, I, I always yeah. I frequently get people asking me, how do I get into coffee? Which is a weird question. But I tell them, go to Star if you like milkshakes, go to Starbucks or Dunkin Donuts and get a fancy frilly one that has all this crap in it because it's nice and sugary and, and sweet. Yeah, and get one I of those. Even... And then and then if, if you like that, keep getting that or other types of drinks and slowly get less and less syrup in it and less and less sugar in it yeah and eventually you'll just like the taste of coffee i didn't even go that far i went to 7-eleven got their hazelnut coffee and put hazelnut creamer in it hmm. and it just tasted like hazelnut so that worked for me true i, I for me personally i used to get like a like a caramel a latte at dunkin donuts which just tastes like sugar yeah. uh and then now, eventually i would just get uh, regular coffee with milk and sugar and then eventually yeah. uh now i just like lattes with no or, now bear or in mind whites. i'm not i'm not you i don't spend five hours making a cup of coffee <laughs> i heat up the water i put a two tablespoons of gr grounds in i pour it over the pour over and then boom coffee so pe some people would say pour over is is uh is is uh what do you call it uh pretentious some people would say pour over is like is like going a little too much <laughs> Is it pour? It just it's time consuming. Yeah, but it's fun. But I like pour over. It. I like pour over because we have a small kitchen and it's mm. you know it's nice to have not a lot of crap out to make one cup of coffee. I I, so. I did get an arrow press, which is pretty nice. It's pretty cheap. It's like yeah. it's like a it's like a small French press, except it makes espresso style, so it's like a little mm -hmm. more concentrated. This all right. We're gonna be talking about today. Uh, Nintendo the stick drift. Listen, I gotta be real with you guys. Nothing fucking happened this week. <laughs> this was this was a bad week for news. The only thing this that was happened was yesterday. There was a rumor that Nintendo actually fixed stick drift because of a little yeah. something we'll get into. Uh, and it turned out uh not to be true it was not easily exact. debunkable but it's still interesting because like it's something nintendo could easily do to fix it in the future um because it, it's something they've already done we'll talk about it uh what yeah. we need right now from you people we've i've been talking about this for months i want to have some evergreen topics that we could just pull from to talk about on the podcast like for example we have one 
we had like a Wolf Den Live where we talked about uh, the best Nintendo Switch games, like a list of that. Uh, we used mm-hmm. to talk about the best, like uh, we had one best Game Boy games. Um, yes. Things that we a could few, do editorial style, we could pull back. A, a few pull, weeks pull ago, we talked about the 30th anniversary of Sonic. That wasn't exactly news, but we just reminisced about right. how much we love that little blue rodent. So things like that. So if we have some things where we could, uh, you know, if you, anything we could uh, just pull from uh, yeah. that that we could spend like 20 minutes to a half an hour on, uh, leave it in the chat and I will, uh, either me or one of the mods, please, will like collect them. Yeah. Um, evergreen topics. I see best GBA games, not a bad idea. Best Switch yeah. games for handheld play, not a bad idea. That is also because there are some Switch games would not recommend in handheld play. But even stuff like uh, you know, like our, our favorite games from uh, from like we, we the best year in gaming personally. I yeah. think I think nineteen ninety six. That is a good year. I'm going to write that down. Uh, Best year in gaming. I believe the popular consensus is 2004 is one of the best years in gaming, but we can cross that bridge (laughs) if we ever bring up that, if we ever use that topic. Anyway, the main topic today is this stupid Nintendo stick drift rumor. So this, this kind of broke yesterday while I was streaming. Uh, anyway, Nintendo Life says the foam pads and the Zelda Joy-Con controllers aren't new. I don't think this is what the article originally said. But anyway, uh, earlier this month, we ran a story about... Wait. (laughs) I don't like how this isn't... uh, This doesn't tell the story in order. I would like to tell the story in order with without hindsight being thrown in the in the front of it. So f- what <laughs> happened was uh Chicken Noodle Gamer, R- Mario RPG fan on Twitter, tweeted thanks to YouTuber VK, it's known that pressure to the back of a Joy-Con controller stick stops drift. So I mentioned that in a previous video how uh uh you can just put like a card or something uh on the back of where the Joy-Con stick is, and it'll give it a little bit of pressure, and it uh, alleviates drift. I don't want to say prevents it or stops it, but it greatly helps or reduces drift. Um, Anyway, this guy says, I opened my Zelda Joy-Cons and noticed strips. They're not in any Joy-Cons me or others have seen. Please share this post. It seems Nintendo fixed their biggest issue behind the scenes. And uh, this got a lot of traction. 7,000 likes. Even me. Uh, and I I, I tweeted about it because I saw it when I was live. And I was like, well, I got all these freaking Joy-Cons next to me. Because I still haven't cleaned up my desk. Um, I, uh, I quote tweeted it. And I said, can confirm, because I opened my Zelda ones. And there's the pads. But it's only in the right Joy-Con. It's not in the left. Which is weird, because he says Zelda Joy-Cons. And notice some strips. So he makes it sound like it's in both. And you Uh, would think the left one, because that's the one you use the most. (laughs) That's the one you use for actually moving your character. Right. So it is a little weird that it's only in the right one. Uh, but anyway, uh, th- then I, uh, then I opened a whole bunch of other joy cons because he's, he says, uh, it's not in any other joy cons me or others have seen. So I opened, uh, I think the next one I, I, the next one I opened was my, um, my Mario, uh, red switch once and I opened the right one and the pads were there. So I was like, all right, it's at least been that old. So then I tried to open my gold Joy-Con because I remember that uh, this has the highest potential of being a launch day Joy-Con. I don't know which ones of mine are my launch day Joy-Cons. I, this has the highest potential of being a launch day Joy-Con. Um, and I couldn't open it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, I opened some Wait. other gray ones that I had, and they ended up being—they ended up having the pad in them. 
Yes. Question. Will, yes. Yes. Um, the gold Joy Cons are aren't those a shell? Correct. So they it, used to be all gray. the pictures I've seen. Right from all the pictures I've seen, though, the padding from the Zelda Joy Cons appears to be on the shell itself. Um. So, so so it uh, it's it is a little confusing. Um, yeah. So oh wait no you're 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 right. So okay. the, the way the way Joy Cons look on the inside, uh, you can actually see it in this picture right here. Yeah. The way Joy Cons look on the inside, there is uh, three parts to the shell. There's the front and the back, which is the color, and then there's the uh -huh. middle part. And the middle part that is almost entirely unseen from the outside, uh -huh. that part is the one that has the uh, the um, the strips. Okay. So, for example, my um, my metal ones, the metal Joy-Con that I have, that that I yeah. the aluminum ones, uh, the middle part is not aluminum. The middle part okay. still uses the same plastic. The only way you can see the original plastic is from the very top. You see, you might, you can kind of see there's gray here. Okay. So if I used any other color Joy-Con. This middle part would like if I use a red Joy-Con and catabolize it. That'd be is, red. That would be red up here. Okay, I um, gotcha. This is not gold, but it's like a weird like beige color. So I guess they did okay. give me a uh, a new middle part. So you're right. There's potentially I could have opened this and there wouldn't have been anything in here, and I would have been like, oh look at that. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't find a launch day one, but I found ones that are close to launch day and they still had the pad in it. Uh, and then other people uh, very quickly found out that uh, they uh, uh, launch day switches have the padding on the right Joy-Con. So it's completely uh, false information. They've always right. had pads, these little foam pads on the right Joy-Con, which is really bizarre. Also, VK Channel, the guy who figured out the fix in the first place, tweeted at the original poster and said, this is amazing. Finally, Nintendo acknowledged the issue, and hopefully none of us will experience the terrible drift anymore. Bro, you broke the news about st the stick drift thing. You yeah. must have opened like a million Joy-Con. Maybe he opened a million left Joy-Cons, and he never even knew that the yeah. right Joy-Con had pads. Because again, the left I mean one's the one that's going to have the problem the most. Well, what's do we know like the stat of left Joy Cons getting drift versus right Joy Cons getting drift? That would because I know really mine was mine was a left Joy Con because that's okay. the one I use the most. Wait, we can back. We can do this now. We have the technology and we have the people. Will yes. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna run a poll. Uh, new go. poll. Uh. Uh, if, ooh, 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 I just full screened everything. This is terrible. Oh boy. Everybody sees what you're doing. If you've, um, if you've experienced drift, which joy con was it? Um, left, right. So also, if you, also do both. Both. Okay. Yeah, left, right, or both. Because I'm seeing people in the chat saying that it's happened to both of them. All right, I'm also... So I can add five different poll answers. So I have left, right, both, mostly left, and mostly right. <laughs> so if you have, like, three Joy-Con that have drift and two of them were left, that means mostly yeah. left. Um, all right, and we'll... This Joy... This, uh, we'll do five minutes for the duration of this poll. Okay. Uh, all right, so look at the chat and check it out. And we'll check back in a little bit. Uh, so check that out. If you've never had Drift, then you don't answer the poll. The poll's not for you. Yeah. Don't answer it. Um, I have never had Drift, so I can't answer it. For example. Uh, I have had Drift, so I'm voting. Good. Was it a left? It was left. Makes a lot of sense. Um, so anyway, 
Uh, it was it's very bizarre that uh, so many people didn't know that it was a thing that the right Joy-Con has these pads in them already. It's these very thin foam pads. Uh, here, Spawn Wave actually tweeted and has a better picture of it. Uh, it does look like Nintendo put foam in the newest Joy-Con controllers behind the stick module. This is exactly what they need to do to alleviate stick drift. Um, and it also would be, this would contribute to the right stick not getting as much drift. They should make this pad a little thicker, though. Um, yeah. But anyway, Spawn Wave also said, also Nintendo seems to have been doing this for a little while now. At least my yellow Joy-Cons from a couple years ago also has it. And it, it's been confirmed that they've been doing it since launch. So what this tells me, though, is that Nintendo, like, why, why do those foam pads exist? Why do they put them in there? And why only in the right Joy-Con? It says to me that Nintendo predicted stick drift or they knew that it was going to be a problem. Because, I mean, these companies rigorously text, uh, test all their stuff. Like, right. I know Microsoft, I've seen Microsoft has videos of these machines that, like, rapidly press their their buttons uh yeah. like thousands and thousands of times to see at what point will they break so they have to have had a robot that just sits there and and wiggles the stick for days and days and yeah. days until it wears down so this tells me that nintendo knew something about stick drift and they knew how to fix it <laughs> and they just this they put this weird band-aid on it unless these don't have anything to do with stick drift i mean that's unless possible this, too this is because isn't the right joy con the one where you you know tap an amiibo against true and you it tap ha it has the thumbstick so that is true this part right here uh on the right side it's like this little tiny like chip that is yeah. plugged into the board. Uh, it's a pain. It makes it a pain in the ass to open this thing up. But yes, that is the NFC chip, I believe. So maybe the pe those pads have to do with the NFC chip, and not necessarily drift. Because if it has to do with drift, then you would think Nintendo would put it in the left Joy-Con by now. So, but so, so far, all evidence points to they haven't. What would make sense to me is that uh, the maybe so so. The whole theory behind the stick drift fix that VK channel uh, posted is that mm -hmm. uh, you put pressure on the, the the stick module and that will alleviate the drift. So right. what this, what I think is most probable here is the left Joy-Con uh, is tighter than the right Joy-Con and to make it to make the right Joy-Con just as tight, they added these these foam pads. And I guess right. this was the tightness that Nintendo deemed uh, 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 adequate. Uh, and we know now that it isn't in all cases. <laughs> it isn't adequate in all cases. So maybe right. they need to add some thicker foam on both Joy-Cons, which I think would be a very easy fix. But if they're yeah. not willing to do that, maybe they know something that we don't. Like maybe, uh, maybe they decided that adding this f extra foam or this thickness will uh, make Joy Cons degrade faster. So maybe yeah. this, maybe this is the optimal amount of stuff that they put in it. I don't know. I mean, th this this has been going on for like what two years, three years at this point. That they have to have be been working on this in some capacity. They have to have been trying to figure out how to stop this, especially because they're in a lawsuit right now over it. Uh, so I just don't... If they didn't put it in the modern Joy-Cons, then they probably haven't figured it out yet. I but, Yeah, yeah they, they either haven't figured it out yet or they, well, they haven't figured out how to make it uh, uh, profitable or, or not expensive for them to fix. Right, yeah. With that being said, uh, if the poll is finished, and judging from uh, the results, an overwhelming 74% uh, have experienced drift in the left Joy-Con. If you heard music just now, it's because I messed up the seed transition. But yes, 74% uh, <laughs> left Joy-Con. Uh, left Joy-Con. Fo followed by 14% say both. 
Uh, 8% say mostly left, 3% said mostly right. Only 2% said right. Yeah. That's crazy. So, now again, I don't know if this is because the right Joy-Con has padding or because the left Joy-Con gets used more. Um, but that leads me to believe that it could be possible that the padding in the right Joy-Con helps. So and if it does help, maybe Nintendo should add them to the left. So I'd also imagine that a lot of people here who are watching, they play all different types of games. And most games use the left Joy-Con thumbstick uh, the most. But I'm sure some people here play games like uh, Warframe or Apex, and they play like thousands of hours yeah. of those types of games on the Switch. That uses both Joy-Con, so or both thumbsticks. Uh, so I'd imagine a game like that, if you get Drift, you should be getting it on both. So uh, that is... Uh, that's... That's so. I'd imagine that there's more than two percent of you who voted that um, play games that utilize the right thumbstick a lot. So th th this yeah. is this is very strange. Um, um, yeah, people in the chat like Ryan Christie is saying that it admits fault if they basically fix the drift because they are being sued, which is something we always bring up but we forgot to today. Uh, that For, is a yeah. big reason why Nintendo hasn't. Uh, implemented a fix at all because <clears throat> they're being sued and it would they have not yet admitted that uh that they are in the wrong um so you're right about that um but yeah this is i honest i honestly think uh putting that pad in a in a left joy con might make things better i i'd be curious if you, if you guys have drift i'd be curious to get a joy con with drift and just put the padding from a right stick into a left stick and see if it's enough yeah all, all i did was i put two cards uh uh two like little pieces of like of like thick paper like behind a joystick and it it fixed the drift for me um but it was like kind of like bullshit drift it wasn't like the real drift that people get it was self-implemented drift <laughs> um Anyway, uh, that, was a, that was a little interesting little thing that happened the other day. Uh, yeah. Oh, one more thing. Fellow YouTuber Erica Griffin responded to this, no noting how it's apparently been a good while since these foam pads have been in the Joy-Con, but they won't necessarily resolve drift issues. I first saw them on my neon purple and orange Joy-Con October 2019. I reshell these things all the time. It has the pads and still drifts a bit. Shrug. Silly fix for a multifaceted issue. Uh, so there you go. It's not it's not a hard and true fix either. Right. But uh, I still like to know why they're there. Uh, I, I would assume it's because they decided uh, it would alleviate some drift. But uh, mm -hmm. I guess not. Anyway... Uh, where are we? Travel Steinberg, thanks for the 16 months. Hey, Will, hope you're doing well. Bob. No, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> thanks, Travel. I'm doing good, doing pretty well. Hanging thanks in for, there. Thanks for thinking of me. Ratsim54, thank you for the Prime subscription. Would you play uh, a rat simulator? Excuse me? Oh, because his, his name, name is Ratsim. Rat Sim. It's, it better be damn good. Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to go out of my way and be like, I could really use a rat simulator in my life right now. I remember there was a game on the Wii. It was called Deadly Creatures where you play as a scorpion and a spider and you just fight What's other insects. Deadliest, deadly creatures. It was on the Wii. And the craziest part about it was like, oh, I remember this. Who was it? Billy Bob Thornton and Dennis Hopper were in the game. <laughs> I remember this. I think Game Grumps played it. Yeah. yeah. Apparently it got good reviews when it came out. <laughs> oh, this guy's playing it in an emulator in 1080p. Ooh. Ooh. Ew. I'm sorry. I'm triggering arachnophobia, uh, arachnophobia right now. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. 
Um, anyway. Uh, anybody else give us more ideas for, for uh, evergreen videos? Uh, I did I did see a lot of people suggest the backlog. I, I just what, want to say I called it. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it was like people are going to say the backlog. You know that, right? Chris BX, thank you for the 36 months. I appreciate it. I saw someone say uh, favorite game on every console. That's a good one. Yeah. Scroll all the way back. Or best game on every console. We can do it. Yeah. One of those. Because that's not uh, that's a thing. We, we are, we're very conscious of the distinction between favorite and best. Yes. Um. Anyway. Uh, moving on. There was an EA play this this past week. Did you know? Yeah, it, uh, I actually watched it. It was fine. <laughs> I heard some news about it after the fact, and I was uh, I think I was happy with some of the stuff I saw. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't like upset or disappointed by any of it, but like a lot of it just wasn't really things that were interesting to me. You know, because they're not really games I play. <laughs> right. But, I mean, it wasn't a bad presentation. Um, uh, It was but... better than Sony's States of Play. Yes, I mean, uh, so EA wasn't at E3, right? Right. This, they, they've been doing their State of Plays instead of E3 for the past few years. Right. And and well they've been doing it like at or like alongside of E3, but last year they yeah. didn't and this year they decided to do that again and I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Um I mean state of play saying it's better than that isn't saying much. <laughs> state of plays have <laughs> not been good for a very long time. Yeah. And uh yeah, I don't know. I was I don't expect anything out of EA. So, oh, we got uh, okay. Yeah. Just go for it. Just go for it. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm remembering the the drip right. feed of information that was coming through my feed, and then I was like, oh yeah, EA Play. That's all makes sense that we're getting this news. Yeah. So in the pre-show, they showed off um, footage from the Sims 4 Cottage Living expansion pack, uh, which is now available worldwide. The news came with the news came accompanied with a new music video from indie rocker Japanese Breakfast for her hit single "Be Sweet." Performed in the legendary language of Simlish. Oh God, <laughs> I hate. I it bothers me when they do that. <laughs> can like I they translate songs into Simlish? Can I play it without getting copyright? I'm gonna do it. Probably not. I'm doing it. Right? If you played this, I would just assume it's in a different language. Yeah. I've also never heard of Japanese breakfast until this EA fight. Yeah. Also, MXPX The Sims. MXPX has a song that they translated into Simlish. Really? You remember MXPX? Only 90s kids will remember MXPX pop. Hey, that was a little bit early English. to mid 2000. Yeah. That, that was a little English. And we're going to get freaking sniped out by EA today. Anyway. Yeah. What else? Anyway, uh, up next in the actual show, there was uh, Respawn showed off Apex Legends Emergence, the next major update for the blockbuster first person shooter. Emergence introduces an, an entirely new legendary named uh, Seer. A recon focused character who's able to track and hunt down enemies even through walls. The update will also add ranked arenas, the next evolution of the three on three arenas that's sure to make these high stakes contests even more competitive. And speaking of competitive, uh, EA also, we also learned that Apex Legends Global Series will be returning for year two in September, bringing with it cross play between PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, Pro League, and Challenger Circuit competitions. 
and a base prize pool of five million dollars. Oh my! Emergence arrives on August third. Wait, what? Holy! I hate you know what I hate when they say that when they say prize pool of this much money because like yeah. the, the that'll happen and then they'll say oh grand prize you get ten thousand dollars. It's yeah. like what <laughs> happened all that because they you know like like eighth place gets some money and then you know whatever anyway uh this character looks really cool uh and kind of makes me want to play apex if i'm being honest yeah i'd be playing it on xbox um but after playing call of duty for so much for so long uh switching to stuff like apex it's just like it's it's impossible yeah i i saw uh, I, i saw today uh big streamers nick Merckx, tim the tap man and courage they all rage quit call of duty and started playing apex for like the first time uh um, wow. yeah that was kind of a that was kind of a big deal also everybody hates activision right now we'll be talking about that later oh well, yeah we talked we're talking about no news that was the only news uh yeah. any who uh from the vast arenas of Apex Legends, we move on to the more intimate setting of Lost in Random, the upcoming EA Originals title from Zoink, the award-winning <laughs> studio behind Faye. Uh, Lost in Random introduces players to a dark fairy tale world where every event is driven by chance. Players must combine tactical thinking with randomness of dice-based battles through the use of spells, a slingshot, and a living die named Dicey, fighting their way through a series of board game themed arenas lost in random launches september 10th on switch ps4 xbox one ps5 series x and s and pc on origin and steam okay uh this looks kind of cute i don't know if i'm gonna yeah. pick it up but it looks cute uh it's probably the most original looking thing in the entire uh ea catalog that they showed off mm-hmm. ea origin ea originals is a weird label because it's basically their indie game label. Yay. But like... Yay. Or, originals? Originals. Ori- originals, yeah. It's like this... Um, the Faye that they said... Um, on, what was that game? Unraveled, where you play as the... The Yarn yes. Ragdoll. Remember yeah, that? That, yeah, that looks good. Those are all... Yeah. Um, it, it's weird to think of EA trying to do indie games. Yeah. And, like, and these are indie games that like clearly have a budget behind them. Unlike well, a lot of other indie games, it does a way out count. I don't know, and and uh, that it takes two. I think they might, because those are not uh, because f- those are not made by EA. They're made by whatever that ah. guy's company is, and then EA like just publishes it. A way out is an action adventure game developed by Haze Light Studios and published by Electronic Arts under their EA Originals program. Yeah. Uh, EA Originals is like, I guess, their Fox Searchlight or whatever. Oh, so was It Takes Two, EA Originals, yeah. and that's a big game. That's not. That's not really a. I mean, yeah. I, they put a lot of money into it, and also, uh, it sold a lot. So, yeah. Okay, what else do we have? All right. Uh, next we go back into the. Arena with details from season two of the hilariously chaotic dodgeball game Knockout City. Dubbed Fight at the Movies, the new season features a cinematic theme as players explore a new map, a hollow uh sorry, a new map called the Hollowwood Drive-In. New area features a, a dynamic areas inspired by classic films, from the Cathedral of Horror to the Bridge of Love. Also, this new season is the Soda Ball. Uh, which blinds opponents with sticky syrup, a lineup of yep. movie-themed gear, a new season of league play, and new cosmetics, playlists, and more. The season launches July 27th, uh, yes, today, actually, uh, on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, Origin, Steam, and the Epic Game Store, plus PS5 and Series X and S through backwards compatibility. Uh, Game Pass, EA Play, and Epic Game Store members can play Knockout City for free, and everyone else can try it for free up to street rank 25. Yo, Knockout City is great. Uh, only play it if you got like a crew of friends, though. You need uh, three people on a team. 
uh but right. it's sick and it's free to play for a little bit at least so uh i I might check it out for a new season i might hop back in yeah what i what i liked about like the the movie theme of it was they didn't go with like obvious references or cliches and stuff they just did a, a general cinematic look and feel to it because a lot of times when they do like at the movies it's like oh here's a laser sword from space battles or here's yeah. a time traveling car with gold wing doors that's not copyright no it, it literally looks like a movie theater you got the popcorn and yeah and uh and yeah yeah no and 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 the soda and 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 it's got the let's all go to the lobby type type vibe <laughs> yeah um so that looks pretty cool anyway uh next up the big news this time uh is the introduction of battlefield portal an all-new community driven platform that will give players the ability to discover create and share unexpected battles this mode will allow you to take fan favorite maps from across the battlefield games and cust and build custom experiences featuring characters vehicles gadgets and weapons in near endless combinations a whole army of world war ii versus a squad of 2042 specialists of course, tank versus sniper? Absolutely. You sh you'll be able to set your own rules and go beyond anything uh, you've been able to create before in the franchise when Battlefield Portal launches in Battlefield 2042 on October 22nd for PS4, Xbox One, PS5, Series X and S, and PC. So this so is basically their like big, I guess, is I, I don't want to say this is their... Uh, Warzone competitor because it's nothing like that, right? But this, I guess, this is where they think they can find their niche in so, competitive. So, so uh, what this is, it, it it's a way to transcend timelines. So like you could have like someone from World War One or a team from World War One fighting against a, a modern age, yeah, like, like army, um, which is cool. And so that means you can yeah. get all different equipment from all different uh, uh timelines. Um, however. I first saw this uh, from this tweet that Twitch made. It just says mm -hmm. Battlefield Portal, and it's Battlefield, and it's got the orange portal and the and the blue portal from Portal. <laughs> and yeah. and then I Googled it, and there was a lot of pictures of the Portal gun with the Battlefield logo, and I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, are we getting a crossover? That's crazy. And then finally I watched this whole trailer, and I was like, where's the Portal gun? <laughs> <laughs> but no it's not at all what this yeah, is everybody's, no. everybody's just trying to be goofy and funny yeah uh it looks cool so I, 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 it I, does i, I uh i'm uh, like i don't know how i feel about team-based uh uh games anymore like i'm too i'm too hooked on on the battle royale format to to really i mean i, I used to play a lot of battlefield and i loved the big maps and stuff but uh, i don't know i don't know about that anymore I, I feel like there's a place for it. I just don't know if um, Battlefield will have what it takes to be that game. Because there's already, like, you know, people have already upset from the last few games. Um, this new mode looks exciting, but it's only in Battlefield 2042. So, like, they don't offer it as a free mode to, like, try. And then if you like the game, you can go on to the whole game. Like what right. Warzone did. So I don't know if it's going to be the game to get people into team-based games again. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Battlefield. Uh, so Battlefield has a very particular format that is what made it popular. It's the big, big team battles. Um, yeah. But I mean, Call of Duty had a particular format that made it popular, and then they drank the battle royale Kool Aid. And you know became better for it. Yeah. And and they they, they, they it's good to uh to keep things fresh and change things every once in a while. Um, right. But uh, I don't know. I, I I'm I'm willing to give Battlefield 2042 a, a shot to see if it's yeah. still good. If I still like Battlefield. Um. Yeah. It does seem like they're trying to make all the right choices with this one it's been a while since the last battlefield game so hopefully and there's no single player right to screw things up so uh, uh, hopefully they found their their niche 
I'm also worried about Halo. When that multiplayer comes out, uh, I'm worried what that's going to be like. If it's still, if people are still gonna, um, if it's gonna be as popular as it used to be. Well, I know Halo Infinite's multiplayer is gonna be free. Right, right, right. So at least they'll they'll have that going for it. But here's another thing: uh, they announced that there's going to be a ping system in Halo Infinite. Mm-hmm. Which means you can like uh, mark things for your team to find. Like if right. there's an enemy over there, you can say "enemy over there" with one button. Yeah, yeah. And that doesn't make sense if you have a team of like twenty people. <laughs> you have twenty people pinging stuff. That doesn't make any sense. That leads well, me to it's, believe is going to be either modes where you play with like two or three people, or modes where that's like battle royale, where it's like you versus yeah, well, a, a lot of people. The Halo, I mean. From my experience with Halo, the the maps were never huge, and like you don't you ever play with like hundreds of people. Mm-hmm. You play with like you know, I like you said twenty at most. They well they had so some, they I had don't... some big maps. Yeah, with with, uh, with lots of players at one point, but that's not like the core of their gameplay. It's all it was always just a team yeah. based, like even sometimes capture the flag and stuff. Right. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like with the delay and stuff that's that's definitely a game that like they want to get this right the first time but also too like you know we saw this with halo 5 and we saw this with the master chief collection they kept working on the game after launch Mm -hmm. and you know master chief collection was infamous for having a broken multiplayer system and now it's you know people play that more than they do halo 5 and halo 5 you know completely revamped their multiplayer and eventually got it back on track but it was the single player of that game that killed it for everybody because that a shit single player apparently <laughs> right uh i'm excited for for halo i i i, I like yeah. uh i like games with a really quick time to kill and halo does not have that and neither does apex really um yeah but uh I, i'll give it a shot anyway that was a tangent we were talking about battlefield yeah. and then we moved <laughs> on to halo but that's really there's only one more thing on, one more on thing EA last but certainly definitely not least our friends and motive revealed the, their next project and it's a doozy a dead space size doozy oh. this fucking guy who wrote this <laughs> that's right motive is remaking the beloved critically acclaimed survival horror game re- rebuilding it from the ground up to harness the power of next generation gaming hardware far more than a remaster dead space will feature a completely rebuilt asset and all new technology using the powerful frostbite engine to craft a terrifyingly Ugh. immersive experience while preserving and honoring the legacy of the original, developed exclusively for PS5, Series X, and S, and PC, Dead Space will be released worldwide on a date that is yet to be announced. I have never played Dead Space. I played Dead Space 1. I liked it. I never finished it, but I liked what I played of it. Uh, I, it is at this point I'd like to remind the audience that EA, while while demanding that Dead Space sell Call of Duty numbers, did everything they could to sabotage the development of the Dead Space trilogy uh, to the point where they basically made Dead Space 3 and the original developer, Visceral, did not. Um, They then forced Visceral to stop making Dead Space games and work on a Star Wars game that they had a lot of trouble doing uh, developing and then shut down visceral completely um and basically said there's no money in horror and then resident evil 2 remake came out and was a smash hit and then they said hey there's money in horror do we have a horror franchise we can piggyback off of are th- do we still own those developers oh we shut them down quick get somebody else to do it yeah ea uh notoriously uh not the best company uh they i yes. think they've been the most hated company in america for like for like two years in a row only two only two that was a long time i mean people generally hate big publishers i think i think pe- people generally yeah. have have a lot of uh angst towards big publishers because they're huge because they have to make because they're so big they have to make decisions that are going to make them a lot of money not necessarily decisions that are best for uh consumers right um and uh that sucks a lot of the time that's it's the reason yes. why a lot of beloved franchises get uh get 
does just, just milked yeah. dry uh it's the reason why wow like kind of I, I i think wow got like uh sullied f- for that yeah. I, I know that they, they had, like a long time ago they had the um they had like that uh uh wow thing you can download that was original wow it was vanilla wow from when it first came out yeah. that everybody loved and then <laughs> uh ea shut that sh- or activision blizzard blizzard yeah shut that shit down and then everybody got uh everybody got mad and then it turns out it was because they were releasing their own vanilla uh wow and uh it wasn't as good and people didn't like yeah. it as much um anyway speaking of oh. big developers i want yeah i noticed you didn't even put an article in yeah it's a heavy subject and we're not exactly you know walter cronkite oh we're definitely not capable of talking about it because we're two white males we're, um, we're two privileged white males but i think it's important but to say that they're it is pieces important. of shit and, and you know we're, we're, we're two white males with empathy <laughs> yes. um and we have a general understanding that like while we not we might not have it bad we understand others do and we sympathize with them and we wish things could be better and we are on their side in helping to make things better uh this was published july 22nd uh so right after wolf den podcast went up on youtube yes this week. um California sues Activision Blizzard over a culture of constant sexual harassment. Jesus Christ. That's yeah. quite the way to put it. <laughs> I'm just I'm just putting a note here. Um yeah. so anyway, this is as per The Verge, uh, who says California's Department of Fair Employment and Housing, I didn't know this was a thing, says that renowned mm-hmm. game publishing studio Blizzard Entertainment and its own Activision Blizzard have created a culture of quote cons- constant sexual harassment and gender-based discrimination in a new lawsuit filed Tuesday that claims top executives were aware and or involved. And in the hours since the suit was revealed, numerous women have already stepped forward to cooperate the allegations. The details are so disturbing that we're going to start with a trigger warning right now. The idea that male employees held, quote, cube crawls is one of the tamer allegations in the lawsuit. Uh, I forgot about this part. Everybody hold on to your bitches. We're getting wild. Yeah, like, seriously, it's it's going to get real fucked up real fast yeah uh female employees uh, this is uh this is now quoting the uh statement that this that uh the dfeh uh is is alleging uh yeah female employees almost universally confirmed that working for defendants uh was akin to working in a frat house which invariably involved male employees drinking and subjecting female employees to sexual harassment with no repercussion. Quote, cube crawls in defendant's offices. Defendant is just uh, Activision. They're the defendant. Yeah. Uh, In defendant's offices were common and male employees proudly came into work hungover. Similarly, male employees would play video games during work, engage in banter about their sexual encounters, talk openly about female bodies, and make numerous jokes about rape. As a product of this, quote, frat boy culture, women were subjected to numerous sexual comments and advances, groping and unwanted physical touching and other forms of harassment. A female employee noted that random male employees would approach her on defendant's work site and comment on her breasts. Female employees working for the World of Warcraft team noted that male employees and supervisors would hit hit on them. God, the break in that was not good. Uh, World of Warcraft team noted that male employees and supervisors would hit on them, make derogatory comments a- about rape, and otherwise engage in demeaning behavior. This behavior was known to supervisors and indeed encouraged by them, including a male supervisor openly encouraging a male subordinate to, quote, buy a prostitute to cure his bad mood. What a funny joke. Um, I think that's 
enough. There's more. There's obviously a lot yeah, more it, here. It goes on, including uh, a woman even taking her own life because yes, the constant abuse was it was too much. That particular woman ended up being in a relationship with her superior, which might have been. It's a. It, it's it's kind of theorized. Well, no, no, that. she wasn't. She wasn't in a relationship with him he constantly like harassed her and almost like abused her to the point where she couldn't take it anymore and it was easier to for her to end her life than it was to quit that's a that's a <laughs> or better way result, of or like take it up yeah yeah uh, I, I i i didn't i i didn't mean he, they were in a relationship they, they, there right. was no, something I know. I happening know. that made that drove her to that um yeah. but anyway uh the, the moral of the story is it was so bad at activision blizzard that the government had to come in and say uh you guys are sexist pieces of shit and your work culture uh, uh promotes it um yeah i mean uh, work culture is just an extension of high school and college you go from high school you, yeah, everybody's just you know clicky pieces of shit and then you go into college mm -hmm. and it's like times 10 and but you introduce alcohol into the situation so it sucks it's yeah. a lot worse um and uh you know everybody's uh angsty teens they they're, they're freaking horny and shit and they're doing yeah. dumb shit and getting into trouble but once you graduate college you're in the professional environment yeah you, you like like enough's enough you know yeah like, you, like it's supposed, it wasn't okay then now it's yeah. definitely not okay you're supposed to evolve and grow as you get older and mm. yeah you you do dumb shit in college but you know those are four of the most important years of your life because those determine what you do later on in life as mm. messed up as that is so in a way yeah you you can party and have fun but you also have to take it very seriously and that has to then go on to the next stage of your life which is the workforce whatever you know part of the workforce you happen to take up and it seems like and to be clear this is not just activision blizzard there were also um reports that ubisoft which has a long history of sexual harassment problems uh still has them and has not changed um, i'd imagine like it's it's years, all of so. the big publishers I'd imagine it's, it's all of the big publishers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's probably all of the big publishers, but we know for sure because Ubisoft keeps getting brought up. Riot. Uh, and now... Riot was Riot also of, a, a while ago. Yes. Um, and now we have the government, like you said, specifically going after Activision. Right. Uh, and Activision, for their part, released a statement that basically said, uh, to sum it up... Well, no, this was when they, the news first broke. Oh, okay. Uh, that the DFEH includes distorted and in many cases false descriptions of Blizzard's past. So they are flat out denying everything that the the DFEH has said. That's And that is because they are being sued and they can't admit fault. But, but they <laughs> fucked up. And yes. and they honestly they should probably roll over because they're gonna lose this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, going on, continuing on from that. Um, after they announced that, you know, they came out and said that these are false and they're not true. A collective of two thousand employees at Activision Blizzard wrote an open letter to the company, saying that. Uh, that was very harmful and disrespectful to all the people who came forward uh, with these allegations. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we, the undersigned, agree that the statements from Activision Blizzard Inc. and their legal counsel regarding the DFEH lawsuit, as well as the subsequent internal uh, statement from Francis Townsend, are abhorrent and insulting to all that we believe our company should stand for. To put it clearly and unequivocally, our values as employees are not accurately reflected in the words and actions of our leadership. So wow. clearly there is a disconnect between the workforce and the people up top. 
Uh, so, so someone in the chat says, uh, I worked at Ikea and saw the same thing. All companies have some sort, sort of this problem. Uh, uh, it exists in a lot of places, yes. Um, yeah. Uh, that doesn't invalidate it. But also, um, I think it's probably worse because the, the video games industry is largely male-dominated because, uh, yes, I mean, there, there are a lot more females that play video games than we expect and um yeah uh they just play a lot of them just play different types of video games and also a lot of them secretly play video games because of how misogynistic the games industry is they're afraid yeah. to come out as gamers because because of how it is there's i mean imagine playing valorant or or any team-based game where you have to have your mic on you're probably going to leave it off because everybody's such a piece of shit that uh mm -hmm. you're afraid to like come out as a woman when you're playing these team-based games it's fucked up out there and yeah. um uh yeah these i i i can see how a big company like this you got a bunch of nerds that came out of college and they're all they're all all of a sudden in positions of power and uh they're they don't know what to do with that with that power that they suddenly got because they've been fucking nerds their whole life. It's the same thing with all these yeah. piece of shit YouTubers that we see. Um, it, it it it's 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 a weird sort of psychological phenomenon that just turns a person into a piece of shit sometimes. And uh, yeah, it's just in this particular case, uh, you have a company and probably a bunch of companies that were able to do this completely unchecked for a really long time, and it, it it's gotten so bad that the government had to step in and say, hey you got to stop being fucking frat boys about this. All of your little nerds that turned into, into highfalutin uh, businessmen uh, turned yeah. into pieces of shit. So do something to fix it. Uh, have some sort of, of, of regulations in your own company to make it so that uh, it, it, it's comf it's a comfortable work environment for all different types of people. Yeah. You know, <sighs> we, we've seen like, uh, you know, the past few years, we've had things like the me too movement go through, Hollywood and television. Uh, we've had uh, recently the speaking out movement in the professional wrestling industry. Um, we had uh, know the comic that. book industry go through. Yeah, the speaking out was basically the wrestling industry's equivalent of Me Too. I did not know that. Uh, yeah, we uh, the comic book industry went through something very, very soon, and still is going through it because a lot of a lot of shitty writers are being called out. Um, so e every industry nowadays especially since you know the launch of the me too movement has been going through for lack of a better word a renaissance a reckoning really of trying to quell the shitty people out of it the only mm -hmm. mass entertainment industry that hasn't so far or isn't even attempting to try is the video game industry and that's upsetting on many levels it's upsetting to me as a fan as a connoisseur of video games as somebody who talks about video games regularly every week you know it, it's hard to justify you know say when somebody if somebody were to ask me what i think of, of the next call of duty or you know the next assassin's creed or whatever it's hard for me to say yeah you should you know go out and get it or you should play it when i know that there's all this bullshit happening behind the scenes that isn't is not even showing signs of getting better. It's you know the news will break and there might be like a token firing of some sort, but you know certain people will remain in power. Like I don't think Bobby Kotick is getting going anywhere from this, and he He's he CEO, should be right? fired for no yeah yeah, and he should be fired for a number of reasons. Um, <laughs> he, I think most, it well, also came out that he was on the like dossier for what's his name jeffrey epstein he was like named as one of his like friends or you know there was like I only like it. 10 yeah. names on the list and he was one of them the ceo of activision that's yeah. fucked up so uh so yeah no you're right he's not going anywhere um yeah uh but look like like there are people who are boycotting Activision Blizzard, and I don't blame them at all because yeah. this is shitty and yeah. it, 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 something has to be done about it. it uh, yeah, Activision has to kind of save face and, and uh, try not to lose potentially millions of dollars in this lawsuit. But also, 
they have thousands and thousands of employees that they need to treat better. So that's yeah. probably where you should save face. Not so much with the money you're going to lose because you're going to keep making your fucking money. The money's not an issue. Yeah. You already make so much fucking money. Um, but uh, yeah, I, 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 we here at the Wolf Den have been boycotting uh, Gearbox games because their CEO is a piece yeah. of shit. <laughs> um, and if we just keep adding game companies to the list... Yeah, Riot no, has, has a history of sexual harassment. Yeah, uh, Ubisoft had a history of sexual harassment. Now Activision has a history of sexual harassment. Yeah, we're not going to be able to play any fucking games if we keep boycotting games. Also, yeah. these I mean, companies that... have people that work there. Like, like I think Bobby Kotick should be taken off of CEO. But somebody, a company like Gearbox, their CEO is running away with so much money. He's paying himself yeah. a fuck ton. Uh, and that was another controversy. Actually, the act, uh, the Activision Blizzard guy was also just in a controversy because of how much money he he was taking off the top. Yeah, um, he takes. Yeah, because he's the board of directors complained that he was making too much money. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I I don't know. Well, it, uh, Something needs to be done about uh, about this. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, the, I'm glad that the government stepped in. I'm not happy that this situation yeah. exists at all, and I'm not happy that the government even has to step in. They shouldn't have to step in. Everybody just should know not to be a giant piece of shit. And if you work yeah. at a company and some shit's going down, uh, you need to defend your coworkers. You need to you if if they're on the same level as you, uh, you need to or even it's better if the, if if you're if you're a superior you need to step in and defend your your fellow employees because uh uh it, it's 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 better if some if a third party gets involved it, it's it's harder yeah. for somebody who's who's in the shit who's getting shit on it's harder for them to 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 help themselves um you need to you need to help the people around you uh, in any way you can speak up and say some say that if you see something say something that's the lirr's uh uh yeah uh, uh, catchphrase um, uh it should also be noted that tomorrow um there's going to be an employee walkout at activision blizzard it's the yes. uh, turnout is expected to be about 50 people or more uh with many joining virtually for the sake of COVID 19 and i think that is the start because it you know having the dfeh come in and, and say all these things and having employees write letters is one thing but i think to have employees actually walk out and not work yeah i think that'll that'll affect that'll that'll affect more change it'll be it'll be something more substantial i would say yeah for 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 sure and and that walkout is not only and it's not really about the sexual harassment. It's about their response to the sexual harassment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, wild. It's a, it's, a, it's a, I, you know I hope that I I hope that if this is happening at more companies, that more companies uh, jump on board and get some like reform all across the board. And uh, yeah. and th I know that there are some people out there who are listening to this that can't believe or 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 completely deny that this is something that exists that these some of these companies are this misogynistic or this uh this uh uh scary to work at as a female employee um and i'll also say there are people who say that this happened to male employees too that they were also sexually harassed yeah um yeah so yeah i i but of course it's going to be worse for, for for female employees just because of the power imbalance um but uh yeah i i if you think that that didn't that does that if you think that this is like uh blown out of proportion or that or that these companies aren't that misogynistic there's first of all this article says 800 employees that have signed the letter but there's will said there were 2000 almost 2000 employees that signed the letter also, uh, the fucking government got involved, and they have a bunch of cases that they are using, uh, actual things that have happened, to sue Activision Blizzard. And if that happened, then you bet your fucking ass that that shit actually happens in real life. Yeah. Um, 
I forgot someone in the chat sent that I think it was Metascension, a video from ten year from a BlizzCon of ten years ago, where a, a woman there was a panel and a woman asked the panel um if they would develop if they would create female characters who didn't look like they came out of the Victoria's Secret catalog. I saw that. And the panel's response the panel's response was, What catalog would you like us to take reference from? And then just proceeded to make fun of her for the next five minutes. Yeah, it was fucked. I saw that. that I saw was that clip. Messed up. That was ten years like, ago. I thought that was more recently. Yeah, that was no, that was ten years ago. Because that would fly ten years ago. Yeah, it doesn't fly anymore. No, but yeah, that's. I mean, uh, I think that's a. Uh, I mean, th uh, there's room in the industry for sexualized characters, but there's also plenty of room in the industry for non-sexualized characters. And if somebody asks for a non-sexualized character, I think that's a pretty yeah. reasonable request. And to then just be yeah. made fun of in front of like a thousand people in an auditorium, it's, it's messed up. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, we're not going anywhere with this conversation. This is just uh, we're, yeah, we're just, no, just. I I thought it would be uh uh, I thought it would be a little ignorant of us to not uh bring it up because this was the biggest news that happened yeah, this week. I, I guess you're right because like the worst thing you can do about a problem is ignore it. And it wasn't my intention to like ignore it. I just didn't know how best to handle it. But I guess this was the best we could do. That's the thing: just is talk that about it. And, when, yeah, when things like this are a big deal in the games industry, as 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 per this show, we have to just talk about it uh, with through our lens. We don't. We're, we're not women. Yeah. We can't really relate but at least we can uh, 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 sympathize with the people who, who have uh, more experience with this sort of stuff. Um, I, 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 we're not always going to be right about things because no. we, we, we only have our own experiences to go off of. Um, but uh, yeah, wait, I think it's important for us to talk about stuff like this. Um, uh, anyway... Um, it all st if you want to do something about this guys it all starts with you playing a team based game and then sticking up for people who are getting harassed in the in the voice chat because yeah. if you've ever <laughs> if you've ever been on Xbox live or anything you know that it's rough out there yeah anyway um let's talk about more fun things but first yes dark light thanks for the 100 bits uh, evergreen topic best Genesis games not included in the Genesis Classics collection uh, I will write that down uh, yeah uh, it won't let me um, and Migs Luna thank you for the 13 months anyway what's next what do we got uh Unlocks six months of Apple TV Plus now on your PlayStation 5. <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy. That's <laughs> such good news. I'm so oh. excited about it. Uh, discover even more to love on your PS5 console with six months extended trial uh, access to Apple TV Plus. Redeem your offer net between now and July 22nd, 2022 and start watching critically acclaimed Apple TV originals. Um, enjoy fan favorites like Ted Lasso starring Jason Sudeikis. C, starring Jason Momoa with Dave Bautista and Alfred Woodward, Alfre Woodward, and the highly anticipated sci-fi drama Foundation. New Apple original series and films premiere every month. Watch exclusively on Apple TV on the Apple TV Plus app. Plans renew. Uh, plans renew at four ninety nine a month after extended trial period uh, or until canceled. Can I? So can, can I log into Mom's Apple TV and give her six months? Is that how this works? Uh, maybe. Because I certainly do not give a, a piss about I know TV. she's, I think she's currently enjoying a year because our dad got his MacBook. And that comes with a year. Oh, I also have to get her a new iPad, so that'll come with a year. Uh, M. Frank Gaming in the chat says, your moving background is freaking terrible. There's a, if if you don't like it, uh, there's a way to turn it off. What you do is you open a new tab and you shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, 
this is only for PlayStation 5 owners. This is not available to PS4 owners. Um, I don't know if Apple TV is weird because they just give it they just give it away with like you know new products and stuff. So I I don't think I already oh here I already have Apple TV Plus. Can I redeem this offer? If you currently have Apple TV Plus free trial or are already subscribed, you can redeem this offer. If you've subscribed to Apple TV Plus through a bundle offer like Apple One, you are not eligible to redeem this offer. So if you're already subscribed to Apple TV Plus, you can still get six months free. Okay, I will. Uh, so I, do I have to turn on my PlayStation Five in order to do this? Can I do it on the PlayStation like website? Uh, here we go. How to redeem your offer? Find the Apple TV app from your PlayStation Five console's search yeah. bar, or find yeah. Download uh, download and open the Apple TV app and follow the on-screen instructions. Sign in with your Apple TV or create Apple ID or create an Apple ID if you don't have one. Enjoy your six free months of Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, I'll leave this open in a tab. I'll do it later. Uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll add mom's account because she's always paying for Apple TV. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, underscore in the chat says they are starting not including Apple TV Plus with new products. Oh, interesting. oh, interesting. Kinda, that kind of sucks. Yeah, because that was the only way people watched it, unless you have a daughter who accidentally buys it. Yo, it's you know? insane. After seeing Will's niece, like, just no, hold your niece, my daughter, Will's uh, child, Will's spawn, after seeing the spawn <laughs> of Will. Gr grab a device every single time she grabs a device she buys something that's how many clip yeah. or, sh or she comes an inch away from one tap away from buying something that's and i that's completely on purpose that these companies make it so easy to buy something that you, if you just go like this and tap a bunch of times you will buy something that's crazy you literally give it to a baby and they'll they will buy it for you it's insane it, it the, the amount you're you're only a few taps away from buying a subscription from Apple. Yeah, it's wild. Anyway, so if yeah, if you ever can't figure out how to buy Apple TV, just give Will's daughter your your <laughs> iPhone and she'll do it for you. Yeah. Um, I mean that said, we watched a lot of Apple TV that month, and I will say Ted Lasso, excellent, very good. Uh, if you're gonna get out and season two starting soon, so if you're gonna get this, definitely watch that. Um, the Beastie Boys documentary that they have on there is oh. also very good. I, I recommend watching that. Um, we, my wife and I watched season one of Mystic Quest. It's basically, um, it's about the creation of a video game, like a fictional right. video game. Um, it's not bad. It's very insidery. So like if you're watching with somebody who doesn't play video games or know anything about video games, they're going to get lost. Um, yeah, that's about it's it. The, it's the really guy from we, Always Sunny, isn't it? Guy from Always Sunny, isn't it? Um, what's her name? Ashley Birch is on it. So it's not bad. I have a really bad uh, habit also, of, of watching uh, YouTube clips of shows and then getting stuck in a yeah. hole for like an hour and then not actually watching the show. Yeah. Uh, I've been getting a lot of like random Simpsons clips in my you know, suggested feed, and I'll just watch those, even though I've seen <laughs> The Simpsons like a million times. Uh, also, Apple TV Plus, exclusive home for Snoopy content. Oh. So if you are our dad, <laughs> you can watch as much Snoopy as you want. Um, anyway, uh, moving on. There's now a GameCube emulator uh, that... No, I'm sorry. GameCube emulator... Dolphin now has support for uh, Game Boy Advance. Yes. Uh, one of the best, but sadly uh, least used features of the Nintendo GameCube was its ability to talk to a Game Boy Advance. Few games used it, some exclusively, uh, but now a lot more people can hopefully enjoy the idea with the release of a new version of the popular GameCube emulator, Dolphin. Uh, if you've never seen the technology in action, the GameCube allowed users to connect up to four Game Boy Advance handhelds to a console and either unlock added features uh, or even play entire games using the handheld. Uh, 
The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker, and some Pokemon games are examples of the former, with the GBA giving you access to bonus stuff players without a GBA couldn't enjoy. While Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles and The Legend of Zelda Four Swords were the latter, being games built entirely around the idea of up to four friends huddling together around one GameCube playing the game on their GBAs. To do this, you would literally need to connect your GBAs to the GameCube via a cable or in even rarer circumstances, a wireless adapter. And being, and being such an unwieldy solution in the real world, attempts to emulate it have been fraught with difficulty. The ability to do so has actually existed for over a decade, but it's only recently that emulators have been able to do it properly. And even then you're going to need to be running things separately, which was a bit much which was a bit much for the average I just want to play this old game for fun kind of user. The fact that Dolphin now has integrated support for the GBA via the addition of the MGBA emulator changes all of that. You can now play these GameCube games along with their GBA controls and display all from the same program. The video below shows the new support in action. So, so, so now my question i want to play mm -hmm. legend of zelda four swords online with other people mm. what do we do like like uh, like so this this makes it so that uh you can use uh an emulated game boy advance uh in in conjunction with an emulated gamecube which is uh, awesome right but yes. How do you have like four swords uses you could have four Game Boy Advances? How do yes. you have all of them running at the same time? Well, on per the computer? next paragraph, as the video explains, it even improves on the original connection method by adding support for online play. <gasps> the biggest hindrance to everyone ever actually playing games like Four Swords wasn't just finding three friends who own Game Boy Advances, but getting them all to want to play the game. Uh, sorry. Uh, but them all wanting to play the game, then all being in the same place at the same time to play it, despite this being, you know, a huge part of why Nintendo designed the games like this in the first place. Now friends can just play together online, meaning hopefully a lot more people get to enjoy these unique ahead-of-their-time experiences uh, than we're able to at at the time you can get the new version of dolphin and read a trans uh fascinating history of how the gba gamecube emulation got to this point at the link here all right i need to figure this out because i would love to be able to play four swords with four people that'd be sick yeah um yeah i want to i want to do that that that's freaking cool um i love how the part of the example is the chow garden <laughs> oh yeah that was like a big like early like early version of that when like when it first came out so you would like have you would have the chow garden and sonic adventure 2 battle and then if you had any of the game boy games through this link cable you can transfer it to the game boy advance game and take it on the go Tre treble in the chat is calling me out and says bob's so full of shit he doesn't want to play legend of zelda anything shut up treble listen it was a <laughs> big deal connecting four Game Boy Advances together to play a multiplayer Zelda game. That was a big deal yeah. back in the day. So, yeah, and mean, nobody ever did it. <laughs> yeah. It was a big deal connecting one Game Boy Advance right. to your GameCube in order. Because, like, we had games that, like, had this uh, feature, but, like, some of them didn't work very well, and some of them, like, wasn't even worth connecting. Like, I think Splinter Cell... You could connect and like you could you get a special like trigger bomb or whatever, but like you can beat the game without it. So what's the point? Uh, I know Metroid Prime, uh, you can unlock different suits and even the original Metroid if you connect it to Metroid Fusion. So that was cool. So I, I but, also would love to play uh, that friggin' maze ball game on uh, on Game Boy. You can have like eight Game Boys plugged together. And oh, yeah. that's another thing nobody ever actually did. Um, that game, a MIDI maze, I think it was. 
Game Boy. Uh, uh, this version allows two players with a link cable or up to four players with the four-player adapter. I thought it was like a lot. Oh, here we go. It is often rumored that the Game Boy version would allow up to 16 players by daisy chaining four player adapters which is not the case oh according to no. programmer robert champagne the game does contain a 16 player mode however it requires a special connector that would be bundled with the game to create a chain of game link cables as nintendo did not allow them to do so that connector was never released oh so the 16 player oh. mode cannot be enabled all right somebody's yeah. gotta make that thing dude Where's yes. MVG? Get MVG on the horn. Yeah. We got some videos to uh, make. I, we have this game, but I, ne I can never play it. Um, Pac-Man Versus. And oh. that, that game had a great concept because you had three people uh, on the TV screen playing the ghosts and one person on the GBA playing Pac-Man. And Pac-Man just plays traditional Pac-Man, but the humans control the ghosts and try to find Pac-Man. Wait, it's a Game Boy Advance game? It, no, it's a GameCube game that requires a Game Boy Advance. It's called Pac-Man Versus. How do we have that, and why do we have that? I don't know. I think you stole it from a GameStop when you were working there. I've never stolen anything from GameStop. Will, how dare you? It came. It, it didn't even. It wasn't even like um. Oh, it wasn't a skew. A single re. It wasn't right. a skew. It wasn't a single retail release. It came bundled with another Pac-Man game that nobody gave a shit about. Then I and definitely every, all, stole it. Only, <laughs> yeah, people only cared about Pac-Man versus. I definitely stole this because it wasn't a skew, so it was probably just sitting yeah. there. Um, I googled Pac-Man, uh, and freaking uh, the Google Doodle came up. You could just freaking play Pac-Man on Google. Nice, it's pretty cool. You can also play a JRPG right now on the Google Doodle. Uh, for the Olympics. Oh. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, moral of the story, I want to try this uh, Game Boy Advance through GameCube situation. That sounds like a cool idea. Uh, let's plow through some more. We got Earthbound footage? Uh, Earthbound 64 footage, specifically. Mother 3. Yes. Uh, earlier this month, a mother fan uh, pounced on a Japanese auction listing that was selling a Nintendo corporate CD-ROM from 1998 solely because this disc included footage from the canceled Earthbound 64 for the Nintendo 64. With bids beginning at just $18, the CD-ROM oh. was eventually sold for $357, all just so Zen, the purchaser, could do the world a favor and get their hands on a copy of the Earthbound 64 trailer from Nintendo's fabled Space World 1997 event. So uh, previously, the main way people had been able to see the footage of the game is in action was via this ancient IGN footage. And then, uh, as you can see, Bob showed on this has on display the full Space World 97 footage. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so, so hold on. this, what I'm showing right now is the old footage. Yeah. It's, was uploaded on in 2006 so like at the dawn of youtube yeah um so this is what we've had it's incredible that this game never never happened yeah because this it looks so done looks like there's so much here and then this is the new footage that we just found out about um this is insane when are we gonna get a rom I don't know. Like I don't it, know if a ROM exists. I need to know why this didn't happen. Because like it looks so done. Like this looks like something I might have played. Right. I don't know if I uh, liked it, but <laughs> Yeah. I, I, to be clear, this is like again, this is not the first footage of Earthbound sixty four. This is just the most footage of Earthbound sixty four that has been released. Right. right, um, right. Earthbound 64 was supposed to be Mother 3. Um, it was eventually canceled and shifted over to the Game Boy instead, um, where it got put on the Game Boy Advance as the Mother 3 we all know and beg Nintendo to port uh, today. Mm -hmm. I, I 
think it was canceled just because it was taking too long to like make the game and make it the way they wanted to. So it was just easier to just scrap it and put it on the GBA. That that uh that sucks. I mean, you know, yeah. we ended up getting Star Fox 2 after a really long time. So, uh yeah, maybe one day if Nintendo's feeling really generous, maybe we'll get some I don't some know because information. As as le- as little as they care about Star Fox, they care even less about Earthbound. I mean, listen, we sh- we should be getting N64 games on the Switch one of these days. The, should be the, the the biggest like mind boggling announcement they can make is is here's Mother Three. We we it, we finished it. Here it is. That would that would that would be insane. Yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on, we got this play date pre-orders go live July 29th. Here's how to get one. I signed up for the mailing list. I think this thing looks stupid. Let me <laughs> let me rephrase it. it. It is a very pretty thing. It's very pretty, and it's it's a cool design. Uh, it's it's very modern looking. It belongs in the MoMA. I think that uh, there's a fat chance it's going to be any good games on here. <laughs> I'm just finding out that the pre-order is $179. Yeah, for a little... Uh, for a little for something uh, that is literally a novelty. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little thing with a bi-color screen. It's got a, a, a D-pad, an A and a B button... And a crank, the crank, yeah, is how is how you control some of the stuff. It's not actually. I thought the crank was to like charge the fucking thing. It's not. It's literally yeah. uh, an input device. Um, very strange. The whole gimmick behind this is that it's going to be easy to develop for, and like the tools to develop right. are, are are really out there. If they could open this thing up and put some emulators on here, then this thing could be pretty cool. But again, it's a bi-color screen, so like it's just black yeah. and white. Yeah. Um, the first announced in 2019. Yes. Uh, games for the device will roll out in seasons, and at least two dozen games have been confirmed for it. Uh, so I'm I pre-ordered one. I I was streaming yesterday, right? And uh, the chat bullied me into pre-ordering one. Also, I need some video ideas, so I might as well. Um. And I'd like to be proven wrong. Maybe there are going to be some good games for this thing. Uh, Maybe. You can see them on their website. Okay, Polygon just gave me a 404 error. Thanks, dude. <laughs> oh, the website is play.date. The website is yeah. sick. I will say the design stuff that they did here is is awesome. It's very well designed. Um, but also, how much was the analog pocket? They're like 200 bucks. Yeah, bro. This thing's 180 and it pales in comparison. Yeah. Like the the analog pocket is like a high-end specialty device for a niche market and but it plays games you know already know and love. Yeah, this does not. So that's why yeah. that's why I'm very confused about this thing. But the only reason people are excited about this is because it's pretty and and they did a good job with the design yeah. work so uh good on them also they have some famous developers working on some stuff uh i'm not entirely sure who but uh that's another reason to keep an eye on this is that uh some of these games are small games made by uh important uh uh developers um so I don't know. We'll keep an eye on it and see uh, see if anything good comes out of it. Um, and yeah, here's some of the development tools. Um, I don't know. We'll 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 see what happens. I I would love for this thing to be open and uh, and able to be uh uh freaking uh cracked wide open and flashed with some yeah. Game Boy games. That would be cool because it's tiny. I'd love to put this in my mm-hmm. back pocket and play some Game Boy games. Anyway, uh, so if you're interested in that, pre-orders start uh, Thursday? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I, you can go on their website and get email updates. Uh, anyway, 
Next news, we got uh, 3DS is is uh, dead. Rip 3DS. Back in 2019, Nintendo announced that 3DS and Wii U users in Europe, Australia, and New Zealand would no longer be able to top up their eShop funds with a credit card. Japan is now part of this uh, with, with Nintendo's customer support account on social media today confirming credit cards and prepaid cards will no longer be accepted as of January 18th, 2022, 9 a.m. Uh, Japan time. While credit cards will no longer be an option, users will still be able to use eShop cards and make use of funds on shared uh, Nintendo ID accounts. Uh, yeah, and here's the statement. Um, yeah, so uh, so you're not going to be able to use credit cards on the 3DS or the Wii U. Yeah, which, which is like... I guess you could say the start of the end of the 3DS and Wii U eShops. Those yeah, will go the way of the Wii eShop and just get shut down. It, I'll note that this isn't happening in Japan or America. This, oh, this no, no, is, is happening. Yeah. This is not happening in America. This is specifically about the Japanese eShop. Uh, however, uh, however, I'm if this is happening in Japan... If Japan has confirmed this, it's only a matter of time before America gets this as well. Right. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh, yeah. So buy your, whatever you want to get on your 3DS now, because uh, you're not going to be able to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, we all saw this coming. Yeah, Try no, it's obvious. That, get some sound. It's obvious this is going to happen. Yeah. It's obvious this was going to happen, but it's, it's still sad that it is. Right. You know? Because, you know, right now, the Wii U, the easiest to play is the easiest place to play most of the Metroid games if you want to catch up before Metroid Dread comes out. Right. Uh, or just emulate it. Shh. Just don't emulate it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's always news when they when they shut down old uh, storefronts, old electronic storefronts. Yeah. But uh, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Uh, make sure you have lots of storage and download everything if you if yeah. you want to play all your old stuff or just emulate it uh will this is news to me as an oculus quest 2 user yes uh i saw this right before we went live so i had to put it in here uh the quest 2 why aren't you load why don't you load fast enough facebook, facebook recalls the quest 2 Foam inserts over skin irritation issues. What is this the problem? Is this is this the reason for my eczema? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, working with the U.S. Customer uh, Product Safety Commission and Health of Canada, Facebook has issued a voluntary recall for a component that comes with the latest VR headset, according to a blog post from Andrew Bosworth, head of Facebook's Reality Labs. A very small percentage of Quest 2 owners have experienced some amount of skin irritation after using the removable foam face inserts that come with every Quest 2 headset and fit pack. Bosworth says Facebook conducted a review of its manufacturing process and found no unexpected or hazardous contaminants in the insert. Still, out of the desire to create a safe and unbelievable experiences for all, the company will introduce a new silicone cover that fits over the component. Uh, whether you've had issues with the insert or not, you can request that Facebook send you the silicone cover for free. To do so, go to the My Devices section of your account page and click on the dedicated button that's there. I'm going to do that just to get a new one. Facebook. Just... Yeah. Yeah. Facebook is also halting the sale of Oculus Quest temporarily while it works with distributors to add the silicone cover to every Quest 2 package. The company anticipates the headset will be back on store shelves by August 24th. So, minor delay, but, you know, this way you don't get any skin irritation. Yeah, I haven't noticed anything other than, like, you know, the yeah. normal, like, uh, like it presses up against your face if you're wearing it for a long time. I do, I will say yeah. it gets a little gross if you're sweating. Like, it's foam, so yeah. it absorbs all of the, all of the sweat. Yeah, and that's probably what was leading to a lot of skin irritation. True. You're right. That's probably what it was. Yeah. Um, uh, they also but, announced a new 128 gig version of the Quest 2, which will replace the 64 gig model and feature the same 299 price tag. Wow. Okay. So they're giving it a little upgrade. That means yeah. the three is probably imminent. 
um, in like the next year or two. Yeah. Uh, well, when did the Quest Two come out? Did it come out last year? Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking. I need a Wikipedia. Mm. I can't do anything without Wikipedia. Whoops. Whoever said said I was caffeinated before, it's clearly wrong because I'm yawning up a storm. Uh, 2019. Oh wait, that was the regular quest. Quest uh... two. Uh, 2020. I I oh, did that. a sponsored video, <laughs> <laughs> but. I didn't know my video was right when it came out. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, okay, so never mind. The three is not imminent. Uh, I take that back. Oh, the first one was in 2019, so it was two years. No, it was one okay. year. It was one year. So uh, maybe, but I doubt it. Anyway, whatever. If you have an Oculus Quest two, uh, you can get a free foam insert. Just, just, uh, or, or I'm uh, sorry, free silicone cover to the foam insert. Yeah, might as well just, don't, just go for it. Don't lie to our viewers. As I often do. Um, so anyway, that's it for the news. We pod through it. Yay! Yay! Uh, above heavens, thank you for the four months. I appreciate it. I never pulled a tweet of the week. Oh, man. That means we got to start the show all over again from the beginning. Yep. Everybody just... Just close up and re come back in a minute. We're going to do the whole thing from the top. Hi, guys. Welcome to the Wolf 10 Podcast, everybody. Where Bob <laughs> furiously tries to find himself a uh, tweet that he liked in his Twitter likes. That was good enough. For a tweet of the week. Here you go. Uh, this is this is substantial. Uh, right. Everybody get really excited for the tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Oh tweet my of the week. god, you're so excited right now. Here it is. This is by Blueberry Parrick Double. I don't know. Fucked up that my attention span really works like this. 90 minute movie little girl slamming her head into into a <laughs> into a doorknob three and a half hour movie at, no i'm sorry three and a half hour video essay about a video game i've never heard of and then she's got a little foam instead of a door yeah but she's hitting her head on and she's giving a thumbs up I that agree. is i can't tell how many like hour-long video essays on movies i've watched over and over and over again Sometimes more than the actual movie they're talking about. I I would replace this with uh uh like instead of a ninety minute movie, I will watch like eight twenty minute YouTube videos. <laughs> Cause I'm like, oh I don't got time for a ninety minute movie. Let me just let me just yeah. go down a YouTube rabbit hole for four hours. Anyway, uh let's uh now we will we'll talk to you guys. Yes, as always, if you left a comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast, this is the part of the show where we will finally answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments as we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Uh, yes. So, whoops. So, on last week's Wolf Den Live in the comments, we got a lot of paragraphs. What the hell are we, we talking yes, about? Yes, you did it again. Podcast. Bob, keep, I've never Bob lied. Keep saying Wolfden live. I've never lied. <laughs> um, uh, what did we talk about last week? That uh, has all these paragraphs here. I, I don't know. We must have pissed somebody off. Oh, we talked about Steam Deck, didn't we? We did. That was the main. We topic, talked about though. Steam Deck. Yeah. We talked about Nintendo responded to Bloomberg's. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, Surf. Orich says uh, people didn't get mad at Nintendo because Bloomberg got their hopes up. They got mad at Nintendo because Nintendo isn't making a Switch Pro. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, they got radicalized by other YouTubers. 
<laughs> yeah. uh, rumors of the Switch Pro started the week the Switch came out, and what actually started it was the PS4 Pro. That's why the Pro name has stuck. The PS4 Pro set the precedent for a mid-cycle refresh and the existence of the DSi and new 3DS created the expectation that Nintendo would do something similar. Um, I think the existence of the DSi and the new 3DS should have told people that it wasn't going to be uh, crazy, like a crazy refresh like the PS4. I think that his this person's sentence of a rumors of the Switch Pro started the week the Switch came out is not true. I I, I think <laughs> the people week the Switch came out people, people wanted the Switch. People were talking about it for a really long time though. It, they were. I'll, I'll give them that. I mean, yeah, the Switch is the most underpowered of all the systems, and the idea of a spec bump <clears throat> version of the Switch is very enticing and the fact that sony and microsoft did spec bump versions of their then current gen systems did leave more lead more credence to the idea of a switch pro um even during the wii era there was always talk like nintendo was going to release an hd version of the wii and they never did the hd version of the wii was eventually the wii u and that was a whole other thing so yeah I feel like that should have been more of a guideline for what Nintendo is doing with the Switch than anything Sony and Microsoft were doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Bloomberg a thousand percent pushed people over the edge with with the with the things that they were uh, uh, dropping, but be, be, because so many other news outlets and YouTubers picked it up and ran with it. Because it's something people wanted to hear. Right. You know, people, you know, if the idea of a Switch Pro or whatever you wanted to call it is enticing, people are curious about it. And Bloomberg, for their part, did kind of stoke those flames in a way. Just the I just adding, you know, a line that it might have 4K capability was enough to get people excited even though Nintendo had never shown signs of doing that. Tom Rogers says, as someone who works as a comic artist, I appreciate Will's take on problems with comic distribution, starting at around 148.26. You are absolutely right, and comics need to be sold in more places than just LCSs to be... Local, local comic shops. To, I, I, don't get, I don't know. I'm not down with the lingo. To be able to <laughs> thrive and become more mainstream. I just yeah. I saw see, that I don't, I don't just talk out of my butt. I <laughs> <laughs> I saw that uh, S uh, Scott Snyder is signed on to do like a bunch of comicsology stuff. Yeah, uh, comicsology and Dark Horse. I think Dark Horse is gonna do the physical uh, versions uh, of it. But yeah, he, I think he's doing like six books. Yeah, uh, exclusive to comicsology, which is insane, and they all already have artists on them. Um, that's exciting. Anyway, doofer, <laughs> doofer, and then <laughs> Fred made a note Fred here sees. that says, a "Usual shit talker." I will never understand why you guys consistently pick the most boring news stories to be your topic of the show. I won't understand why you keep watching if you're if you're gonna shit on us all yeah. the time. Just watch someone else. We we're, we don't have to watch us yeah. if you don't like the show. There's that's the beauty of the free market. There's thousands yeah. of of. Uh, podcasts in a similar vein uh that you could watch instead and if you have a, and if you if you if you have an idea for a topic instead of saying what you just said give us an idea for a topic <laughs> um anyway uh caitlin torta says uh on the profit margins of the oled switch is it possible that nintendo is has similar margins on the OLED versus original Switch due to the chip shortage. Yes, it is entirely possible. Could they be paying more money to get the chips for the OLED model in time for release? Bob mentioned that Nintendo should have assembly and such streamlined now since the Switch has been out for some time. But I'm wondering if the increase in price is literally due to Nintendo paying more for the components due to ship shortage. Uh... 
and other pandemic-related delays. It's entirely possible that they're lying about profit margin, but I think they issued the statement so they don't miss their investors and if they so they don't mislead their investors and if the significantly higher profit margin was correct they wouldn't have bothered to see a statement to issue a statement um i will say that last week i talked about how um it it doesn't make any sense uh that their profit margin hasn't changed um they're charging 50 dollars more the switch parts should have become cheaper over time they should have streamlined their process it shouldn't be much more for them to ha put the oled screen in the switch however right. this week's video spoiler is going to be on the oled switch uh i i've been looking at oled screens you can't get an OLED screen that is small. And if you do, it's a fuck ton of money. There's OLED screens in phones for some reason, and they're not that expensive. Like my Google Pixel 3a was only $300. It's got an OLED screen in it. But if you want to get like an OLED monitor, you're spending an insane amount of money. So um, OLED turns out pretty expensive technology um yeah so nintendo had to come out and say that uh their profit margins haven't changed also i saw a comment from last week that said profit margins are a percentage so that would also make sense they're going to make more money on this one but it because it's a percentage their profit margin hasn't increased um yeah so that would make sense it makes a lot more sense now after a little bit of, of hindsight anyway uh um blue fox girl says i feel like i'm the perfect niche for the steam deck someone who is not interested in many AAA games but has a large steam library of mid-tier games and indies and old stuff and a low-end pc also though sharing also through sharing libraries with family i reserved one so i can play games from anywhere i can install like itch and devotion from red candles games the one gog wouldn't put on their store on the couch or in bed yes oh there's more i'm not saying this is uh in disagreement i agree with bob i'm trying to say how unique of a demographic i am as a casual gamer who already has a library and wants convenience out of the box without making a pc or spending a thousand dollars this seems great for those like me not people who expect 4k at 120 frames per second they are being delusional um yeah i and i'm glad that uh it could fill a need for for you i i think yeah we did a better job talking about it in last week's wolfden live than i did in my solo stream um mm. because there yeah they're, they're, it, the, the steam deck exists for people and it's gonna solve problems for people but it's going to be a very yeah. select few people yeah, it, it's a very, very small audience for this thing. And, you know, like you said, you are the perfect niche for this. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how many of how many Blue Fox girls there are in the world right now um, mm -hmm. who would fill this perfectly. I feel I do feel like, though, a lot of people who are going to buy Steam decks are people with $10,000 gaming PCs mm -hmm. who change their graphics card every other month. They're gonna they're gonna get it and they're gonna hate it because it's underpowered, it can't do this, can't do this, can't do this. No, no, no. So they're gonna buy it and they're gonna like it for like a year and then realize that, that they yeah. don't like it. Uh just like that me too. with my Microsoft Surface Pro 2. I bought that, I was like, this thing's awesome. <laughs> that thing was never good. <laughs> um kickstand was good though. Yeah, it was better than the Switch kickstand, and now yeah. The Switch has the Switch a kick very stand similar kickstand. Yeah. Uh, Dingo on my 40 says, I am buying a Steam Deck and I don't have a $10,000 PC. It's only $6,000. <laughs> now we're in the chat talking to you people. Yes. Uh, Pork Shop. Hey, Will, did you see the new Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer? I thought it was good since they are going into the Gozer lore with the movie 
seeming being focused on her again. Special effects and story look good, but keeping my expectations in check. Um, I think I'm dead inside because I'm not excited for this movie. And I, I love Ghostbusters. I mean, we were kind of uh, 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 jaded by the last Ghostbusters movie. You know, like like that's no, what we have expectations even, for. No, I don't even think it's that. I like this. Believe me, this is a movie that should have come out when that movie did. They should have done this instead of that one. But I don't know. This they're trying to turn this into. I don't know. Ghostbusters is like a weird thing because on the one hand, it's like this simple comedy starring you know four of the best comedians uh, you know at the time. And on the other hand, it's turned into like this big epic mythology that the two mo- the two canonical movies and one video game didn't create. It was created by the TV show, the real Ghostbusters cartoon, um, and the IDW comics that came out from that. Mostly the the real Ghostbusters cartoon. So, like, I don't really know what Ghostbusters is anymore at this point. And this movie just doesn't look like Ghostbusters. It looks like it looks like what we think we want Ghostbusters to be. And I don't I know mean, if I, I'd that's argue, what it needs to be. I'd argue Star Wars did the same thing. There was all these different, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, things that expanded the universe that got all fans, gave fans the idea of what Star Wars was. And it was the wrong yeah. idea, and then they all got mad. <laughs> no, you're you're absolutely right. But I feel like with Star Wars, there was a much more concerted effort to try and get back to what the essence of it was and like what people actually liked of it. Whereas this is doing something completely different and just sprinkling in Ghostbusters references throughout. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I I think the trailer looked great. Uh, I, I'd like I mean, to watch it. It looks like a good trailer. I mean, I'm gonna see the movie because obviously I am. But... I just don't want to go to theaters anymore. Like like, I would yeah. love. I would have seen Black Widow, but uh, I don't want to go to the theater. And I used, still... I used to be like a big event to be. Hey guys, there's a new Marvel yeah. movie. We all got to go to the theater. Like it, it bothers me that people like that Hollywood is convinced that theaters are gonna make a comeback because. Yeah, movies are making money and whatnot, but so many, so many people I know and that I speak to don't want to go back to movie theaters. They are so they are much more happy to just sit at home and watch movies because it's so much easier, so much convenient, and so much cheaper to do that. I so, got I got to do that instead of watching YouTube videos for four hours at a time. I got to just watch yeah. a movie instead. Yeah, use mom and dad's HBO Max because you know then you can see. You know, same day release. You can see Suicide Squad the day it comes out. For Wait, free did you see Black Widow Max. yet? I didn't ask Black Widow yet. All right, well, when you eventually do, let me know so I can mooch off of it. Yeah. Um, My wife really wants to see Jungle Cruise, which is this week, so I might have to spend thirty dollars on that. What the hell's that? It's uh, it's, it's based on the popular Disney ride, the Jungle Cruise, starring uh, Rock the Dwayne Johnson and John Krasinski's wife. Oh my god. Uh. Rock needs to take a break. Uh, anyway. Uh, what else do you people have for us? To be honest, once movie theaters started getting fancy, I lost interest. This may maybe titanium. You know, I've, I've been beating the drum that it's much better to be able to watch stuff from home. It's much more convenient, and it should be available. Uh, but... <laughs> I only watched movies like... like uh, I only watched new releases in the theaters. Yeah. Like now I'm just not watching movies. And I I, mean, Alamo draft house over here is fucking awesome. Like that's one of the fancy new theaters uh, with like food and like a nice seat. Yeah. And they yell at people who use their phones. And that's really annoying when people use their phones in a theater. So that's great. Uh, But I I don't want to go to any theaters right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also too, like I like the I I actually like like the nice seats and stuff because going to the movies, you know, if you're going to actually go out someplace to see a show, 
it should be a better experience than what you're getting at home. So, so in addition to the big, nice screen and the big, and the big speakers and whatnot, you should be, not, sit in a nice, comfortable chair for, for the two and a half hours that you're going to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Amand, Amandowski, uh, tell me you did not just disrespect Emily Blunt by calling her John Krasinski's wife. Uh, that is you. correct. I disrespected her. I am very sorry. Emily Blunt is a treasure and is too good for him. <laughs> um, Sora9 says Nintendo is shutting down Dr. Mario mobile game. Oh, no. Whatever are we going to do? Oh. I, even, I don't even think I ever downloaded that. Bob and Will, what do you think about the Kotaku article about a way for streamers to avoid DMCAs that might actually work with the new Twitch app? I have no idea what you're talking about. Edward, uh, you, frequently tell, one... you frequently ask th- my opinion on things I've never heard of before. I think he's referring to... I saw something like it was a browser extension for Chrome. Or no, not a bra- for Chrome. A browser extension for like Twitch where you'll listen to the music on Spotify and it will tell your audience what you're listening to and if they have spotify they can go and sync up with what you're listening to at the same time oh oh that's dumb that's That's, dumb i mean that's that's like that's a it's interesting but uh i don't i don't like that yeah eric why did you time out at at edward bova (laughs) oh because he asked it again um yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't. Uh, I think that's dumb. I. I think they just. I don't know. I got. So I had a. I don't. I don't. I'm not that interested in in DMCA on Twitch. If if they fucking copyright strike my Twitch or I get banned for some reason, whatever. I got other things to do. It's probably honestly gonna do me a favor banning me or D or copyright striking my Twitch. But. Um, YouTube is a whole nother story. If I get a DMCA or copyright strike on YouTube, I am livid. And that happened on the Xbox, uh, the the the, uh, the design lab uh, video, the song really? I used in the intro. I got off of Epidemic Sound, which I have a subscription mm-hmm. for through our MCN. So it's a song that I literally had the license to. And that song right. got a copyright strike from some random third party that had no business copyright striking it. And it was a bitch. And it took a week to get the copyright strike lifted. Um, and my biggest fear is that that, that hurts the video algorithmically. But it seems to have it seems to be doing pretty good. But the video picked up speed after the, 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 the copyright strike was lifted. So there um, you go. So it, there's potential that that greatly hurt the video but uh so i'm pissed about that uh but yeah yeah it just it it, i don't really i'm not that interested in the copyright on twitch i don't think it's that uh especially for my type of content you know the shit that we do here it's really not uh it's it's a non-issue for us there's other channels that like react to youtube videos and stuff like and they're probably gonna have to deal with it but we, we we're fine uh, uh, Man of Steel 7, 007, what do you think of YouTube Shorts, and are you going to take part? Uh, thank you for the bits. Um, I'm experimenting with stuff. Uh, I see Kevin Kenson has been doing it. I see Epos Vox has been crushing it. He posts shit like every five seconds. Um, I don't think for the main Wolf Den channel, Shorts, uh, that Shorts format works. I just don't think it works. Uh, I don't like it. Um, however... I do like TikTok, which is just YouTube Shorts. So, because yeah. um, you, I, it feels weird to post the same content on the YouTube channel as a short. Like it's the video already yeah. exists in the long form. Why would I post a short form? I think that the I have little faith in the Shorts program on Twit on YouTube. I think that they're gonna get rid of it soon. Uh, but I think posting the video in a shorter format on TikTok makes more sense. I've just been, I just haven't had a lot of time to do it, but we do have TikTok channels that you should follow. Um, 
uh, Eric says, if you're playing a game, it shouldn't be DMCA'd. It would be different if I was ju just streaming the music and nothing else. Eric, I think that's like the big problem with like yes. tw uh, Twitch DMCA's because like if somebody's playing Tony Hawk or something and they get a DMCA because, you know, Superman was playing in the background. that and That's really unfair because it's in the game and they're right. streaming the game. But that's part of the problem is that legally, if we're talking about copyright issues, video games ha have every right to be copyright striked. <laughs> Because you don't own yeah. that intellectual property. It's someone else's intellectual property. Someone else's music and all that stuff. Also, I'll bring up... Uh, did you hear about the opening ceremony of, of the Olympics in Japan? Yes. Uh, they uh, played a lot of video game music. And none of it was Nintendo music. <laughs> because they probably didn't sign off on it. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to download TikTok just to follow one person. Okay. You don't have to apologize. But we have two accounts. <laughs> if that's why I don't even you. have an account. You do? I don't I don't post shit on it. Yeah. Oh. I think I, I I think I got it before it became illegal last year and then they forgot about making it illegal, so now I have a TikTok account. Right. <laughs> um I steal all my music exclusively from streamers where it's being drowned out by gunfire and yelling content creators <laughs> is there a paid tiktok no at least i don't think so yeah i never understood how tiktok will stay afloat if vine couldn't well vine fucked up really bad in a very obvious way like they weren't paying creators and then um yeah uh and then the creators banded together in like a union and and met with vine and said give us a million dollars each or we walk and vine said no and then they all walked which was like yeah. these are all like you know 19 year olds and they were all yeah. freaking they had their big boy shorts on because that was some bold moves but it worked uh, and then they all moved to youtube absolutely ruined youtube for a time yeah but uh uh they went on to bigger and better things um, TikTok has a creator program where they pay people. It's not nearly anywhere close to as much as YouTube does. Um, but uh, I have higher aspirations for TikTok than uh, than I did for Vine. Uh, Bob, when's the OnlyFans coming? Uh, uh, do you want to, do you do you want to see me nude? How much are you willing to pay? <laughs> let's see. Let's uh, how much demand is there for for me naked? Because uh, daddy needs to buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the money from? I don't suppose advertisers like TikTok content. No, they do. Advertisers love TikTok. It's an emerging platform. Advertisers love anything new and modern that the kids are into. Mm -hmm. So, When I move back where we're doing full buck nude shots ian swaddling full nude bob okay now we're we're done we're out of here yeah i can't we can't do this anymore guys thank you for hanging out thank you for tuning in thank you for watching us thank you for chatting with us as always the wolf den podcast is every single tuesday night at 8 p.m eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolf den if you can't make the show for any reason at all we always put it up as an archive version over on our youtube channel youtube.com slash wolf den podcast so go check us out over there on demand whenever you want if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us you can do that as well we're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolf den podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice but no, but no matter where you get this show from please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Guys, I will be live tomorrow on Wednesday, this Wednesday, and then not again for a while, probably until Sunday I'm, uh, I'm doing stuff. Um, but please come to the streams when I'm live. Also, we got youtube.com slash wolfdenclips, where if you're not there live, you can see the clips version. Uh, I just yep. straight up forgot to give Benny uh, the last stream that we did. So <laughs> I just never gave it to him. So uh, that's going to be late. Um, 
what else uh also yeah if you're watching this on youtube slap a like on that video if you've made it this far because no one ever does yeah uh anyway if you're here on twitch uh we appreciate you go watch dan he's streaming some spooky game uh and we'll see you later uh goodbye Doom two it's not spooky okay Bye. wait no wait this is a modded this is doom 2 in a different engine oh yeah i don't remember exactly what it is uh it's spoopy it's, it's spoopy okay. goodbye it's a spoopy it's looking bye, goodbye. Good.